Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game to Come video, we're going to be discussing the Radeon RX 500 series, specifically some leaks regarding not only the specifications of the card, but some images as well. And then we're going to move over to NVIDIA with some new SKUs in the GTX 1080 as well as the GTX 1060 lineup, which, which feature faster memory. Now, for those of you who don't follow me on social media, um, I have said a couple of times on Facebook, one of the reasons I haven't been so active recently is, well, A, I came down with a pretty nasty cold, yay me, but the primary reason is that I've been very busy with reviews. So, currently, just so you're all aware, today I just finished another exclusive interview with Neil Trevitt, who is the head of the Kronos Group, as well as one of the heads of NVIDIA, specifically the mobile division. So we've talked a lot about computer graphics, um, obviously the Vulkan API, 3D rendering, compute, virtual reality, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's about an hour long interview. So that's going to be up over the next couple of days or so. Um, very cool audio interview. I have finished the GTX 1070 Amp Extreme review. Um, Amy is currently editing that. And I am finishing off the Ryzen 7 1700 review, which features the X Power Titanium from MSI. That's, of course, an X370 board. The basic benchmarking is done on that, and it's not just benchmarks with the board. I've done a whole bunch of stuff, including, but not limited to, SMT enabled and disabled, memory clock speed, and I'm also working on timing changes as well. Um, different clock speeds of the uh cpu itself as well as of course a review of the board so there's a lot of stuff coming up on that and also a couple of other full reviews that i can't really go into at the moment but there is some more hardware coming in other words basically i've been pretty much snowed under but that's one of the reasons that unfortunately i've had to leave you in the lurch but hey you've at least had amy right anywho let's begin with the I think, actually, rather than going through the traditional order where we go through AMD first and then NVIDIA because, obviously, alphabetical order, instead I'm going to do things on the head. I'm going to set the world ablaze, damn it, and we'll go with NVIDIA first. <clears throat> so, as you're probably aware, there were some uh, announcements a while ago that NVIDIA are now offering the ability for, um, chip for um, their partners, their board partners, to release GPUs with higher memory clock speeds. So the first announced, <coughs> excuse me, at the moment is ASOS Strix. It's going to release a variant which has 11 GBPS RAM. Now, this, of course, is going to be based, unsurprisingly, on the GP104 GPU. So essentially, it's going to have um, 11 versus 10 gigabits per second. It's the fourth Strix model from ASOS. It's very similar to what you'd expect from Strix. So, of course, it's a two-slot design. Uh, it's got an 8 plus 2 phase delivery, a 6 plus, eight, uh, 6 plus 8 pin power connector. We don't know the clock speeds yet on the core, but realistically speaking, of course, it's possibly going to have a little bit higher clock speed on the GPU, as you would expect with a Strix model. Another one that's kind of tasty is the GTX 1060 OC 9 GBPS. Once again, it sports 1000 MHz memory faster than the older SKU. Theoretically, this card is going to be facing off against the RX 580. We'll get to that in a moment, I promise you. This is not exactly a Strix card. It's more the direct CU2 cooling solution, so obviously it's not quite so robust. It only features a twin fan design. Unfortunately, just like you can imagine, we don't have information regarding the boost or the base clock. However, the memory is, once again, 6 gigabits um, 6 gigabytes, excuse me, GDDR5 on a 192-bit bus. So all the rest of the specifications, for example, the number of CUDA cores available, 1280 80 TMUs, 48 ROPs, all of that essentially is identical. So these models, I just want to clarify, are going to act kind as far as what we understand from what partners are doing. These are not going to be like for like replacements. In other words, these are going to be like alternative versions of SKUs. So these are not going to replace the older models. They're going to almost sit alongside them on the shelves. So they're presumably going to cost more money. How much more money? I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. So in other words, this is kind of like pushing the final, squeezing the last drops from the orange, if you will, of the Pascal architecture before uh, we either get a refresh or eventually the industry moves to Volta, which we'll just have to wait and see. Spe speaking of squeezing an orange, let's talk about Polaris, shall we? 
So, um, there has been an awful lot of information actually popping up. Funnily enough, one of the pieces of news that I was going to cover before this information popped up is that there has been official confirmation, well, not from AMD exactly, but um, because I was doing research on the Kronos uh, interview with Neil, I happened to notice that GPU Gaps Viewer 1.34.0 have just released a new version, which supports new Vulkan and OpenGL demos. However, they also support the GTX 1080 Ti, unsurprising given that's launch, but also the Radeon RX 580, the 570, 560, and they confirm that they are based on Polaris 10 or 11. However, new information has popped up from videocards.com, and this information shows us not just the cards, but also more information about the specifications. To be totally honest with you, if you've seen the 480, more specifically the original vendors, uh, you know, the, the base models, the reference call, that's the word I was looking for, my brain's working well today, isn't it not? Then you've probably seen these before because they look nigh identical. The reference design does lack a DVI port, which kind of pisses me off just a little bit, to be honest. I'm actually... Um, that's one thing I dislike about the 480s, if I'm honest. It's not like a, the DVI is like the most important thing ever. And yes, you can get converters, but if you're in a pinch and you need like a plug into a DVI monitor. But anyway, um, but of course you will see the 4, 570s and all the others with custom PCBs if you do want. So essentially, this information is not confirmed to be a 570, um, but you know, it could always be a fake, but it looks pretty damn legit. So it's RX 570 is Polaris. But given the fact that we have this other information, once again, this is reported on the Kronos group. And it is also from an official patch note, which is 1.34.0. Once again, I found this kind of by myself when I was doing research for the Vulcan interview. It just makes an awful lot of sense. And there's another picture, which is of the RX 580. Now, this is an ES engineering sample, and the board revision is nine, uh, sorry, C940. It looks like, once again, you get an 8-pin power connector, which, actually, I say once again, that's actually new, isn't it? This will, in theory, allow the 580 to draw more power from their PSU, rather than, you know, being limited with a 6-pin. And, in theory, we should have higher clock speeds. There is, however, a bit of a caveat. While we do have the ASIC confirming this is Polaris, and the sample was manufactured not too long ago, it's March the 3rd, we also have a couple of GPU-Z sorry, yeah, sorry, GPU screenshots, and these basically confirm the RX 570. So, from what we understand, these cards are going to launch mid-next month, which, if you're watching this at a different date, it's going to be April 18th, 2017. This is, once again, meaning that bang, 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 the GTX 1060, as well as the 580s, are going to be competing against one another. It's kind of weird, because what this basically means is we're going to get, essentially, a 580 replacing the 480, presumably. I don't think the two are going to sit next to one another on shelves. It would be bloody weird to have, like, a 480 and then also a 580 on shelves. And I think this is the reason we're seeing some drastic price cuts at the moment with the 480s. They're basically trying to probably cut inventory. The only issue with this is that while you are seeing a roughly um, 100 megahertz boost over the uh, 580, over the 480, so that means you're hitting FP32 precision, uh, sorry, performance of about 6.17. The big problem is the memory clock speeds are not drastically higher. Now, I have done a bit of RX480 testing myself, and honestly, I don't think that that memory inhibited, in other words, memory bandwidth inhibited. In other words, I think the core clock really can go a bit higher. And that's one of the reasons that if you do have a reference design, um, 480, in other words, if you only have like the standard blower, as well as a six pin power connector, generally, rather than sucking more energy for the memory speeds, typically most games, and I stress the word most, because obviously your mileage may vary, different application settings, blah, blah, blah. Most games do perform better if you use that additional power consumption on core clock rather than also trying to shift it to memory. As well as, of course, memory is not like you're getting free pie, you're still increasing the heat of the card. Eh, regardless, I am a little disappointed that we're not seeing additional memory uh, clock speed 
or any changes really to that. And 100, well, actually, it's slightly less than 100, let's just be honest. It's not drastic, like, it's roughly 80 megahertz difference between the 580 and the 480, and I'm going to assume these are not different revisions of silicon. So, in other words, if you have a 480 and your friend John buys a 580, you can pretty much match his performance by just simply clocking an extra 80 megahertz on, like, MSI Afterburner. Another little thought, however, is that his card, theoretically, especially if you've got a different revision, if you've got, like, um, a third-party vendor version, you know, better cooler, theoretically, there might be a bit of extra room in the tank, especially if you're going with the standard SKUs, in other words, the standard cooler, but... Uh, uh, I don't like to say that this is a crappy upgrade, because it's not. Like, you know, if it slots in at the same price point, I have no problem with the 580. It's just it's just an incremental upgrade, really. Let's just be honest. And the card that we're all really interested in is Vega. And I know I'm probably going to sound an awful lot like a broken record, but I really want to know what the hell the disparity is going to be between the Vega lineup and the 580. So, in other words... Are we going to see, like, an intermediary solution between the Vega and the 580? And I know I've asked this before, but seriously, what the hell? I kind of expected to see the 590, and we definitely know Polaris 12 is not it. Uh, Polaris 12 was actually even slower than the um, 560. So, what the hell, dudes? So, we don't know anything about Vega 11 at the moment. That's kind of missing in action. So, we can just wait and see. Anywho... I am bringing you all of the important life questions, don't you know? How many teraflops? That's much more important than anything else. Anyway, um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.